All right, folks, welcome to Nino's Corner.tv. This is going to be a good one. I got John Pounders uh, on my show today. Thank you, John, for joining me. You got your own YouTube channel. Uh, it's starting to pick up. It's starting to kick some ass. We're going to talk about the fallen angels. What are these entities? It seems like more of them are coming down. And we know that millions of them, you say 33 million, About that's the estimate you give, 33 million, which is a very Masonic number, by the way, uh, yeah. have been here. Uh, but it seems to me like more portals and uh, uh, more and more portals are opening. And, you know, you look at CERN, you look at other Montauk, things like that. They've been playing with this for a very long time, the technology. And I think that's finally to the point now where um, many of them are coming through these portals. But before we get into this, folks, this is going to be an exciting, exciting episode. Before we get into this, get your noble gold. You got to get your gold. If you have a bank account, please pay attention. Your savings may be at risk. Uh, the U.S. banking system is once again under extreme stress. This jeopardizes you and your family, folks. But there's an easy way to protect yourself, and that is gold, gold and silver. Uh, contact Noble Gold Investments today and safeguard your family's financial future. As a thank you for opening a qualified account, they'll give you a free quarter-ounce gold standard coin. Uh, visit noblegoldinvestments.com, noblegoldinvestments.com. Hit the link below and get started, folks. You're going to need it. I promise you that. John, man, so, that you know, we were talking a little bit before we got started, and we are on the same page on this. You know, I don't know what to make of all these UFO sightings. All of a sudden, they're becoming more and more prevalent. We know they're going to be trying to play that card very soon in the future. Uh, I think... They're following scripture to a T, almost like a manual. Um, I, I think all this stuff is coming to pass. I think it's going to happen in our lifetimes. I think so too, man. It's I, you know, I've always looked at this subject because it's intrigued me for sure. And like you said before, it goes back to a really ancient uh, past. I mean, if we look at Genesis six, we see this incursion that takes place uh, at the beginning of mankind in the days of Enoch and the days of Noah. You have this incursion of these entities called the watchers according to enoch and they take this facility up on top of mount Hermon, and on top of mount Hermon, they make this oath that they're going to take wives and they're going to bear children unto those wives and it corrupted the whole earth in genesis it says noah was righteous in his generations and that word generations in the hebrew is equal to genealogy so he him and his family were the only one only ones that at that time when the flood came that had their genetics, uh, pure human. So they had mixed, um, mixed all this stuff for a long time. And then, so now we're looking at some stuff you, you'd mentioned that we've been seeing UFOs a lot lately. And that's one of the things that just, especially with the disclosure going on, man, they're talking about, um, the military is actually saying this is stuff is going on, which is crazy because they've always tried to cover it up. But in the forties, you have so many significant things take place that lead me to believe that something happened where they did open portals, like you said. Um, and so we can talk a little bit about that if you want, or we can talk about um, just some of these well, sites. It's, it's they like everything they, yeah. Let's, let's talk about all of it. It's almost like everything they do points to uh, interaction with these beings, these entities. We know they worship them, you know, the highest yeah. levels of the occult. Uh, uh, and we know that they're, you know, you got the CERN, uh, that's just be they're going to build something even something bigger than CERN now they're talking about uh, yeah. so they're, they're, this is very important to the occult to the elite obviously and we got to dive in into this subject and ask why why is this so important I mean everything they do from seasons to numbers to the calendar has to do with, with the worship of these, these energy and, or these entities and deriving power from them What's, what I'm noticing now, it seems like, um, is that now that we have this technology with our phones and uh, trail cams and things of that nature, we're picking up these entities, these these um, these entities all over national parks. Uh, people are catching them at their house with their phones now. I mean, it's, it's commonplace now to just look on the internet and find anything you want to see that's paranormal. And yeah. you got, I ask myself, I always ask myself, Okay, I know these have probably always been here, but it seems now more prevalent. People are now, it's now in our consciousness. More and more people are talking about this. I think doorways are being opened. I agree, brother. And I, I and I want to just kind of give some evidence of that. 
that I think is evidence and evidence that there are more of them around us than we actually know and, and might have been for a very long time. Um, the reason I titled or that I, I guess, bring up the theory that there are at least 33 million angels in existence is because in Revelation, um, I believe, chapter 11, it talks about 10,000 times 10,000 angels that he's seen around the throne. And if you add that number up, 10,000 times 10,000, you get 100 million angels. And so um, in Revelation, it also talks about the dragon, how he takes one third of the hosts down with him to the earth when he is cast down into the earth. And so one third of 100 million is 33 million. Um, you also have the idea that one third in decimal points equals 0.333. Um, there are also 33 Nephilim kings that Joshua and them fought in battle uh, all around Mount Hermon with King Og and all of those people. And so it goes even further back into that. Um, and so you're ta we're talking 33 minutes, a lot of angels, but also, you know, there's something found um, right around the time where Joshua and them were taking um, captive the Levant area. They were taking it captive right near where Beirut, Lebanon is. Uh, Belbek, there were what they called the Ref Rephaim kings. They were like the, and the term Rapha means to heal or reanimate. And so they were either dead kings that reanimated, which were giants, or they were kings of the dead. And uh, this is where the tribe of Dan, the northern tribes, would have taken and they would have been given um, their territory. And I believe they found something there, which is why the Bible hints at Dan taking to the ships. Um, and I'm sure you've seen this, that there was a guy that went on, uh, maybe I think it was Joe Rogan's podcast. He might've actually been on your podcast too, that, uh, believes that the Atlantis is there in Africa and you, you, you know what I'm talking about? And yeah. if you look, yeah. if you look at the map there, and and it's like see... a circular indention on the, on the earth. Like it's like exactly. invented, right? And yes. they believe and... that's what Atlantis used to, Atlantis used to be right. But I, I thought Atlantis was underwater. Well, so, I mean, that's what the Disney kind of narrative is. You know, you have the underwater city that, that lives. But if you look, and it's, it, I think it was underwater. So if you look at that map and you look all the way across the Levant, all the way across the, the ocean that goes all the way into um, a Beirut, all the way through there, even past that, you have this big sand that looks like, if you were looking at it from a beach perspective and you were at the beach and you were just looking down on it, you would see that there was this huge washout that took place all through that civilization, which would have been the civilization of the world. So what I think is the reason that we're opening these portals is in the forties, you see a lot of the UFOs and stuff coming to light. You see that also portals are being opened at that time, all through civilization, Catholic churches, uh, for instance, the Vatican is built on necropolis, which is an ancient um, burial ground necropolis. Most Catholic churches are built over Nephilim, uh, facilities. The Rockefellers built a house in um, an island over a Canaanite altar. Um, I mean, these these people build these houses over there, and there's a lots of reasons. And I think that a lot of it has to do so they can find ancient um, secrets and also possibly channel the entities that are in the ground. And I know you've heard the the term "as above, so below." And if you notice, a lot of these ancient sites are also in line with the stars and the reason is because the stars represent deities according to the Bible. It talks about the angels, one-third of the stars falling from heaven, and you'll see that the word star is synonymous with these Elohim or these angels that were swept down to earth. So I believe that the alignment of them being swept down to that creates some kind of resonance. And if you look at, there's a book that I'm sure that a lot of people that are listeners have you read, it's called Gods from Outer Space uh, oh. by Eric Von Donneken, really good book, actually. You know, I don't agree with Von, Von Donneken about everything, but who agrees with everybody about everything? But he has some really interesting things that he parallels in here about the shapes of these temples and how they are um, actually shaped in the exact way that you would have uh, in a, inside of a radio, like a magnetron inside of a radio to receive um, some kind of signal. And then you have these these phallic symbols, these symbols that are pointed up, we call them steeples, or you call, you know, like the Washington Monument. Or um, obelisk and, type and a, thing. Yeah, and a lot of those obelisk. have crystals, yeah. obelisk, yes, and a lot of those have crystal type stuff, so they can actually store information. 
Um, and you and if you look at just the way our our capital is built, you know, you have the apotheosis of George Washington inside the inside the Capitol building and in the Oval Office. And I think William Cooper brought this out, but the Oval Office gets its word from like the ovaries. And then you have the you have the steeple or the Washington Monument across the reflecting pool reflecting onto that. And so I believe this is kind of an ancient form of communication. That, rep that represents uh, intercourse, correct? At the, at the... Yes. Yeah, it's Correct. like the okay, communion yeah. with gods and and human. It's like the communion, like this this uh, holy communion that takes place. Like the the gods represent the representation is the triangle, and then the human representation is the upside down triangle receiving this uh, stuff. But it's also information, and I think that uh, you know there's other books that I've read that really make it uh, apparent to me. Like breaking uh, this one called Babylon's Banksters, and by Joseph Farrell. If you haven't ever read any of his books, he's a uh, prolific just amazing author but he uh, goes into detail about how the rockefeller or the rockefellers rothschilds and a lot of these banking institutions always had their mint inside of temples because the temples is where they would have the priests who can receive information and they were able to control the city through these things but he presents the theory that they were actually able to communicate from location to location around the entire world using these temples so that they could pass information quicker to take control of the monetary system. And he has some interesting evidences of that, but getting, getting forward to 1940s, uh, cause I don't want to get lost. Hold on. This, is, this is the time. Atlantis. This is the, this is exactly what you were talking about, right? Did I pull up the right, uh, you, yeah, you did. You pulled it up. Yes. That's it. The, uh, I, they call it the, I, the Rakat structure, the eye of the Sahara. That's exactly what it is. And so if you look above you, so where if you go back to that image, you just had it on, I want to show you guys something that, that really is interesting. So that circle there, if you go back, if you go North there, and then you go to the right, you have the pillars of Hercules where the, the, the Strait of Gibraltar is up here going underneath Spain and uh, above Africa, they're going back towards Italy and all that, this ocean here. And all the way at the very end is where you have the Levant, where uh, all of these Nephilim Kings, Mount Hermon, Israel, um, you know, I guess Phoenicians, all of the cities of Tyre would have been at the end of that. And, and that's not a great picture to show that, but it would have been at the end of that. And they would control the information that got out of there. So they had these pillars of Hercules and you can read some of the books of like the ancient sea Kings. And they tell people, Hey, don't go that way. There's huge sea monsters over here, or you're going to fall off the edge of the earth. And you see all these weird maps because they controlled the information flow in that area. But um, it, it was really interesting, and that's kind of a whole nother subject. Mount but, Hermon is supposedly where the the fallen angels are under this mountain, correct? That's yeah, and that's actually in 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 the Book of Enoch. That is where they came down, and they were the watchers of humanity from there, and they made an oath. Interestingly enough, what is on Mount Hermon right now is the UN, and they call themselves the Watchers of Society. So the UN headquarters is directly on top of Mount Hermon where uh, there was a temple found and a stone, uh, which is an oath that they swore. And the Book of Enoch talks about this oath that they swore there. So in my opinion, the UN is a continuation of the Watchers. Um, and the the idea that there are 33 million of them on the earth is um, something that we can't ignore. And I want to read something to you guys, because I think this is really something that at least that I, uh, ha it has made me really rethink the kind of people that I hang around because you got to be very careful. How do I um, go back to my screen here? Maybe uh, you want to go to your screen? Oh, no, no, I got it. Okay. There we go. Um, I was you just going to read screen, this. Or? No, no, it's oh, okay. okay. Um, I, I'm, and I also want to stress that there's so many different types of fallen angels out there. We have the reptilian breeds, which in the Bible that it talks about them being fiery dragons, the seraphim, they're, they're like dragons. They're like reptilians. And then you have the ones that are described that look like human, um, a lot of ancient civilizations de describe them as Atlantean travelers. You know, they're blonde hair, blue eyed, big angels that run around. And um, you have those kind. And then you have the the beasts, the ones that look like animals and such that are out there. But in Jude, it, it gives some hints here that I think that, you know, we it would be foolish to overlook. But also, I don't want to say for a fact this is what it's talking about. But it's really made me rethink a lot of the associations and not necessarily the associations that I have, but more uh, along the lines of how I trust people. I mean, I've gotten to the point where I really, really don't trust hardly anyone. And I'm sure you've been here huh. there too. Welcome you're to there my too. life. <laughs> but, but I keep my Jude, circle small, small, small now. 
Me too, bro, man. You I learned to. the hard way through boxing, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely a hard lesson to learn, but uh, it, 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 I'm definitely a lot sharper and a lot wiser now. Yeah, man. You And I thank God for that because I've been there too. And I, it's a really a blessing that I haven't been ruined because of it. Because I'm telling you, I've encountered some really shysty people, more shysty than I, I could imagine there were out there. But in Jude 1 4, it says, uh, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained, which I don't know what that means. It says, To this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the Lord God. And then in Jude 1, 12, uh, this is continuing. It says, There are spots in your feasts and charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about by the winds, trees whose fruit wither without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. So I start to think it's like, you know, there might be people literally that look like human that are sent to infiltrate you know when you think about the intelligence i believe that i believe that easily yeah I, listen you know what do you think skinwalk uh, skinwalkers are i mean the indians talked about this for uh, hundreds of years if not thousands of years they've been talking about skinwalkers i mean that that's why i was talking about the, the the significance of the trail cams and everyone laughs at me but i'm like listen man yeah bro all that all that is doing is showing you that there is this stuff exists and it's getting caught on camera and these things are able to shape shift into humans into animals uh basically uh you know whatever they choose whatever they desire and i think if they're in the forest okay my common sense if they're out there in in uh on getting caught on trail cams and they're out there in the in the national forest you know here's here's something like one of them right here these rakes uh, here's you know all these apparitions in the in the in the national forest yeah. If they're out there, they're in the government, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. They're amongst well, They're everywhere. You think they're just in the forest? You think they're just in the national forest? No way. They're yeah. everywhere. These things are everywhere, whatever these things are. Yeah. And they've covered and they up. They like, I, I know. On camera. Yeah, bro. And I'm sure you're aware, too, that they cover up some of these areas and they'll like make them government property so that the people don't see these things. I know. I know that it's crazy to me, but... The I do think these things are working with the government and and are a part of it in these deep underground military bunkers and they've been there for a long time and I think it's just now that we're able to, I guess, communicate with these things that they're able to come out. But that if you if you look at Hitler, his one of his main goals was to find these inner earth beings that were he considered Aryan or the original Aryans, the Nordic people, the yes the original type human or whatever whatever he thought he called him the uber mensch which means better man and his goal was to look for these things he went to antarctica looking for them uh, and then of course the story around antarctica i mean we could do a whole show about the amazing stuff that like bird talked about and just the facts surrounding that place it's unreal but you have that and you have the arctic circle where he was you know they were looking for certain things and um you have just a city called Los Angeles, for instance, where the battle in the clouds kind of took place, Battle of Los Angeles, where reported thousands of UFOs were um, battling. You know, they at the, there was a guy that came out that was a part of some of these programs that discussed what he saw on that day. And we're talking about advanced military operations being conducted in Los Angeles. And I don't think that it's any um, coincidence that in L.A., they give them stars. I think there's no coincidence there. I think that there's no coincidence that these beings might, and I'm not saying all of them, but some of them might actually go to LA so that they can be worshiped and so that they can pretend, or I guess, you know, feel their former starhood uh, from before. And, and the fact of, that uh, there's Charles, have you ever heard of Charles Hall who, who claims that he was uh, and he encountered on a military base out in the, well, out in the desert, uh, these tall whites, that would come down and he would, uh, he would, uh, you know, as, uh, he would be associated with them. He would interact with them. And, um, you know, there, there's other people, and I forget the names of these people that have come out and said, yes, these, these beings, you would not be able to tell them, tell the difference between them and a regular human being when they're wearing a hat and shirt and sunglasses. He goes, you can right. see there's distinct differences. They're a lot wider and taller, but, um, you know, they go to Vegas on like family outings and they, and they interact with people just to learn. And then they, and then they leave, you know, as they leave to their planet or whatever. I mean, I take all of this with a, a grain of salt, but I think about it and, and, 
And I often think I to agree myself, with it, man. what are these exactly? You know, are these, you know, are they, are they from another galaxy, a galaxy, another solar system? Are they from another dimension? Are they, are they, I, you know, yeah. I just don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I don't either, man. And what I, is and their I intentions? Have... Are they fallen angels? Are they aliens? I, just, I can't figure it out. I think it's hard to tell because obviously there are good ones and there are bad ones. I mean, uh, in the Bible, if you believe the Bible, of course, it says that, right? There's good angels, there's bad angels. And Hebrews 13 uh, says that, you know, to uh, what, it, how does it say? It says, uh, uh, don't forget to entertain strangers because you have some have entertained angels unaware. So like literally people are communicating with these beings and having no idea that they are angels. And, I think that's why the Bible tells us to test the spirits because you just don't know. You might be dealing with the dark angel. You might be dealing with an angel of light. It's just really hard to tell. And the way things are so deceptive, it's hard to know which way's up. It's hard to know that if, are we getting ready to go to war with evil entities or are we getting ready to go to war with good? Yeah. Are we, are we getting ready to go to war with good entities that we perceive as evil based on our propaganda? Like that's where I'm at. So I think that, it's hard to know for sure, but I don't think that they're, yeah, they, in a way there are extraterrestrial because they came from another place and were cast down. But I believe right now they're, they're stuck here and they want out. That's one of the reasons that they're going, they're wanting to go to war. Like you see the space force with like the Apollo symbolism, which Apollo is the one that rises out of the ground to make war with God in, in the revelation. But you have the symbolism, Atlantis symbolism, trying to maybe basically go back and, and maybe, take revenge for their fallen 33 kings that were around or for the, the 33 million fallen angels or the the ones that are cast down because you know you've heard the term prison planet and i think to them they really believe and they really are in a prison planet they can't leave they want to leave the nephilim according to the bible uh be, according to the book of enoch become evil spirits on earth and work against mankind so they they're they're stuck here and they're working because around they can't against get back to heaven. They cannot unite with God again. They're separated. They're they're cut. Yes, yes. So have you ever seen this movie? Uh, they, they live with. Uh, he's a John Carpenter movie. Have you ever seen? Yeah, this? I have. I have, man. Roddy yes, Rod Piper, I think it is where he puts on the glasses and he sees. Yes, sees things and he for sees really everything are. for what it is. These glasses that he takes that he puts on, all of a sudden he starts seeing reality. Yeah, and he starts seeing the reptilians or whatever these entities are that are walking among us that are that are uh, that are disguised as human beings, you know, interacting with us. And um, I, I've always looked at this movie and thought to myself, man, oh man, boy, does this? It just struck me like, man, I feel like this is what it is. And then now with these damn, you know, these damn uh, trail cams and and videos catching everything, I'm 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 thinking of skinwalkers. Well, what's the difference between a skinwalker and a demonic possession? It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah you know, and it, I think these things uh, intercept or possess bodies that are weak in spirit, weak in mm-hmm. faith. Maybe yes. they're on fentanyl. Maybe they're on drugs. They're just, you know, they're alcoholics. That's another reason I quit alcohol because I believe it was opening portals. And it was a completely spiritual thing for me. The reason I quit alcohol was because I felt, you know, it was opening doorways to something that I, that I wasn't able to fight off anymore. And and honestly, I said, that's it. It's over because I felt like, you know, that's why they say liquor and spirits. Yep. Just the term alcohol, just the term alcohol comes from the word alcohol. I believe it's in in Arabic or whatever it means demon. It's pretty crazy, man. But I agree with you on that. Keep going. Uh, I don't want to stop your stop your on a roll with that because I'm I'm all about not drinking, man. My grandpa was an alcoholic. He beat my grandmother, left him, and then on my other Dude, side. Okay, same so thing. why is he beating your grandmother? The yeah, exactly. I mean, anybody in their right mind would never do something that you think about it at least twice. Yeah. You know, yeah. alcohol. You just boom. That's it. It sounds good. Yeah, so I, exactly I, you right. know. You know, and I just feel like that's really what we are battling with. These things, I saw one ca- uh, trail cam where this rake, they're called rakes. Yeah. Uh, there's like these transparent en- entities that kind of walk on all fours and then they can get up and they're almost translucent, transparent. Uh, was waving this little girl into the forest and she was following him, almost like some kind of mind control. It's somewhere out there. People can look it up. Yeah, um, I've seen that. 
But have you seen that when it's like I have seen that man. in the forest and he's doing this or waving her to him and it's like and that was caught on a trail. That right there showed me if they're doing it like that and there's so many disappearances in national forests, then my mind jumps to how many people in the government are actually could be could be could be skinwalkers could be uh, possessed by these demonic entities and how long have they been here and this is is this who really we are at war with these are the fallen i my mind goes there man but then i jump to the nephilim what are the nephilim i know about david goliath i understand about that what are the nephilim what what what's your outlook on the nephilim so my outlook on the Nephilim is that they are the offspring of whatever the sons of God are, according to the Bible, the sons of Elohim. Um, and in the Bible, describe or in the book of Enoch, it describes them as watchers. And so they created this offspring of these giants that were massive. Um, and can you imagine how much food they would have to eat? You work out. So in order to maintain your weight, you have to eat a certain amount of calories. Yeah, your so, caloric out, uh, intake goes up, it skyrockets, of course, yeah. Yeah, so they would create these temples um, to themselves, and they would, uh, and if I, I've been researching the Anunnaki in the Mesopotamian area, they would create these temples to themselves, and people they would command people to bring them sacrifices, so they would bring them full cows or pigs or whatever they could find to bring to this temple so that this this god wouldn't kill them. And that's how they got their calories in. They would, because they were so massive, they would have to eat. And um, as I said before, I believe that the Nephilim, if there are some around today that are physically alive, um, it would not surprise me. You see so many people talking about oh, wait, being whoa, star whoa, whoa, children. Whoa, whoa. Time out, time out. There is because yes. there, there's a, the, the Kandahar giant that the that's right. that was in 2000. Uh, let me see here. Uh, 2000. Uh, I think it was 2016, wasn't it? Somewhere yeah, 2016. Maybe, maybe I think it was kind of hard giant. Here it is. Um, and I don't know if this photo is real, but this looks pretty real to me. I don't know, but uh, could be fake. Um, but yeah, that, that destroyed a whole unit of soldiers. Yeah. And yeah. then the, I guess when the second unit, the second battalion or unit rolled around, they, they finally got him and they helicoptered this giant out of the Afghanistan mountains. Uh, oh, wow. the giant of uh, Kanda, the Kandahar giant. So this was yeah. this was fairly recently, and then there's a there's actually footage people can look this up of a giant in a cave. This just popped up, I think, in 2023, 2024. Uh, I might be able to find that as well. But go ahead and keep uh, talking about the the Nephilim because I, while you're talking, I'll be look researching this. Yeah, man, and you, and we know that there's been who knows how much research done that we don't even know about and how much of. Um, science that's done behind the curtains that we have no idea what's going on. And we're starting to see, I think, the effects of it, like you said. And something about the Nephilim, because according to the Bible, because they're earthborn, and uh, according to the book of Enoch, because they're born and they have this, the um, the father that is the fallen angel and the mother that's human, it made their spirit so that it can't leave earth. And so they're here roaming around with us. Uh, but I think that there are physical representations of that now since they're, it looks like to me, and I, you know, who am I? I don't know everything, but man, it'd be hard to say that something isn't going on. But I think that it's possible that the, the next incursion has happened and they're back. Uh, they've been unleashed. They're ready to roll and they're forming a plan. And I think that it's hard not to see that most of us who have eyes that are open can see that there is a government know. within a government, you know, that's moving and pulling the strings. It's really hard to deny that. And if you do, I, I find it hard for anybody to say uh, that they're being honest and they could say otherwise. I just really do. And I, do you think this is leading to a final war? I think so. Yes. I think that the whole point in collecting all the money all over the world um, together to try to pull it together is so that they can make war uh, with whatever's coming, like this new space force that they have going on. There's a lot, billions and maybe even trillions of dollars that have been dumped into these programs that we don't even know where all this stuff went. Black and budget. Is that what you're talking about referring to? Black black budget stuff. And and on top of that, man, you, you got to think why would, why have is the push been so hard since the 40s to create technology and create a way for us to live longer, or create a way for us to uh, make cosmic war. The it's you know up 
before the 1900s, people rode camels everywhere. Rode, they rode horses everywhere they went, and the information flow was not that great. Well, 1900s, we have this explosion uh, that's talked about in Daniel. It talks about this knowledge explosion that's going to take place in the end times. And if that this is not what we're talking about, I don't know what it is, but I think this knowledge explosion is they've stumbled across ancient technology. They've opened portals so they can communicate with these Nephilim that have passed before, uh, that were a part of these old mystery schools that were probably the ones that founded most of the world's religions. And they have been able to tap into that and to be able to score some great information. And now I think that and this is just all speculation because I have no idea exactly what all of these entities are, but I think that at least a sect of these entities are roaming the earth and pulling strings. And as I said before, I don't want to uh, slander an entity I don't understand. So I don't know if it's for good or if it's for bad. I know the Nephilim are for bad. The Bible, I believe the scripture when it says that they're evil and they work evil against mankind. I've seen spirits working in people like you were talking about with alcohol. I've seen it working with people in drugs. I've seen it working with people in so many different ways that um, it's undeniable to me. I've seen people crawling with spirits that are just screaming on the floor, just, you know, scraping their face into the floor and just hurting themselves uh, with these things. And uh, I never I've seen... would believe this 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, 10, 15 years ago, I would have been like, that's funny. It's called mental <laughs> friend, but not anymore. Not anymore. Now I know that these things exist. And then once you know that, and once you can identify them, then it's that much easier to accept it and be, and be able to beat them, have be stronger in your faith. Amen. To, to slay them. To You know what I mean? I believe we're all anointed to slay these demons. They are not stronger than we are. We are anointed. Yeah, man. I mean, you look at the Bible and how even like David, David was, you know, anointed to be king, but he he was the only one that had the courage to even stand up to Goliath, the Nephilim, the 10 foot tall uh, Philistine that stood before him mocking God. He was the only one that had the courage to do it. But with a stone, he took him out, you know, and and I think about that and I'm not I'm not David. I'm not anything like that. I'm just a you know normal guy. And, and we're both of us are trying to navigate in this world and seek the truth and and hope to come to as much truth as we possibly can and make waves the best we can in this world. But when I look at the the faith and the strength and the courage of those that came before me to stand in the midst of this, knowing that this is what they're facing, you know, Jesus himself knew he was facing a world run by Satan because Satan took him on top of the mountain and at, told him, he's, he said, look, these are my kingdoms. Do you want these bow down and worship me and they're yours? So even Jesus himself knew what the world was that he was coming into. And he gave us warning, you know, he told us about it and he so told us to be wise as a serpent. And that word wise means uh, prudent in the, in it's called, I think it's phronesis in the, in the Greek phronesis means prudent, not just wise, but prudent to where you are looking at things, examining things, you're making proper decisions. Like as you would, like if you would read the book of Proverbs and Solomon, he told you, tells you all the different ways about people. You, you've got that in your mind. You're acting in prudence because he says, because I send you out as sheep amidst the wolves. So uh, we have to be just as wise as the serpent, just as wise as the wolves that are out there. And um, I think that if, if I can. I've ever always impart, said it takes a wolf yeah. to catch a wolf, man. Yeah. I mean, it, it does, dude, you have to see it. You have to be able to see that, that that's what they do. That's what they think about. They're always thinking of ways to, one over I've, on I've always said a sheepdog chooses to be a sheepdog. You have to choose to be a sheepdog every day because you can easily join the pack. Yeah. You can easily join their back and just decimate all the sheep. It's it's that tempting because yeah. the sheep are so weak, they're followers. Yeah. The they want to care they want to find and, somebody to to follow, lead them, don't they? They want to. Like I'm sure you yeah. battle with it every day, like people trying to be in your cult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I tell people I'm not you know I'm not a role model. Don't look at me, don't look up to me at all. That's why I'm, I'm constantly saying, Hey, I'm a fuck up. You know, I, I, I say that. the same thing, man. I say the same thing. So, so maybe here in the words, body, the alien bodies from Roswell. You think this is when it really st the, the, the the whole like psyop maybe kicked off was with Roswell? So I don't know for sure. I want to read like this is a quote from Kenneth Grant. You know who Kenneth Grant was, he was the leader of the 
Ordo Templo Orientis, also Jack Parson, the famous rocket creator for NASA, was the leader of uh, OTO. And this is a Aleister Crowley started cult that was a, kind of a branch off Freemasonry, more the dark arts of it all. And this is a quote from him. He says, um, this is from Kenneth Grant and also a quote from uh, Jack Parsons. But he said the Babylon working began in 1945 to 1946. And it's spelled B-A-B-A-L-O-N for those that are looking it up. And it says a few months before Crowley's death in 1947 and just prior to the wave of unexplained aerial phenomenon now recalled as the greatest flying saucer flap, Parsons opened a door and something flew in. And here's the quote from him. It says, a gateway for the great old ones has already been established and opened by members of the OTO who are in rapport with this entity. And then the entity's name is Lamb, by the way. If you look that up, L-A-M, this entity looks like a gray alien. And it says this is who Crowley drew and contacted in 1919. Um, so it's interesting, man. I'm looking at a portrait of this uh, lamb right now, but it looks almost like what we would describe as that. And then they yeah. did another, the, they, there was another working called the Ama Lantra working and the Babylon working. Both of those workings were to open portals. And I believe that, that it's possible they did that, man. Crowley had more, he said in his book, uh, he was a 33rd degree Freemason. And he said he had more regalia, so much regalia that it could weigh down an elephant. That's how respected he was within these occult orders for his magical workings. So interesting. So is this the, is this the picture? Did I pull up the right picture? Uh, let me see here. The gray right here. here. Yes. The that's it. Of, that's it. Yeah. That's the lamb. That's the lamb. It's creepy looking man. Yeah. Yeah. That's really creepy looking. And then let's go to, I mean, and so you, you ask yourself, what are the modern portals? Right. And I would look no further than CERN. Correct. Yeah, bro. That's a, that's definitely a portal of a higher order than what we're used to seeing. I think a lot of people look have at right here. Look, look, look at this six, six, six right here. Yep. Yeah. Six, six, six right here. And then that goddess that they have or God that they have in the front there. If you scroll down a few uh, places there on the left, uh, a top left, it's like a circular, this right, this God right there, uh, I believe is Shiva and, um, I think it's Shiva is the God of destruction, which is interesting because Apollyon and Abaddon in the Hebrew, Apollyon in the Greek means the destroyer, the one who comes from the portal or the pit. Um, wow. so I've, I've always thought, po Dude, there's possible. so much more to this than people know, man, this is all spiritual, yeah, all spiritual and, and it's covered in science. I mean, science, I mean, they they sell it to the people that they're oh we're working on this project antimatter and this and dark matter whatever yeah. molecule god god's molecule whatever they're saying that that's just, that has nothing to do with it really it's just the cover right when you say yeah I think so man I think that they're and, and even if they even if they're being because I believe that it may be a cover but it's only a cover to those that are blind like me and you and probably all your listeners we can see okay. You know, is it a coincidence that they built this huge um, particle collider basically right where the old temple of Apollyon was? Is it a coincidence that the logo is 666? Is it a coincidence that it's shaped like uh, ancient temple, the, the actual collider itself? Is it a coincidence that they have a god there that is called the destroyer when that temple that was set up thousands of years ago, uh, that God's supposed to come back, you know, out of the ground and make war with humanity. I don't know. I, to me, it's like, they're, they're telling us and they're basically daring us to do something about it. In my opinion, like now I, I don't think they're hiding it. Um, you know, I don't think they are, bro. I, I think that they're showing us because I think they know that most of us are too dumb to yeah. even understand what is going on i mean well, we're that's, so that's the significance of bread and circus people are paying attention to the car that's why the kardashians are so important yeah. that's why taylor swift is so important that's why monday night football is so important boxing yeah. ufc all of it is so important they pay these athletes millions and millions of dollars you ask yourself why because they don't want you paying attention to this type of stuff here that's right bro that's right because they know that if, if people actually understood what they were doing, they would stop it. But I just, I think that we've been dumbed down 
so much. We also have, if there are 33 million angels on earth, they're in key positions to keep us under an enchantment. Um, I think that most people really don't understand truly how powerful they are. And I think that the reason they don't want, they don't want people to know that because they know that if people knew, then they would have no power because ultimately we are children of God. And with the power and ability to be called a child of God, um, they have no dominion. Like you were saying earlier, they don't have dominion, but a person has to have faith that they have that dominion because they have that dominion through the name of Jesus or name Yeshua, however you want to say it. But the disciples are like, man, you've given us dominion over these demons. And, um, and you know, they didn't understand it, but this was the first time that we've been given dominion over demonic entities. Now, when we're talking about fallen entities that may be physically human bodies, um, that's, that becomes a different topic. You know, it's a more interesting topic because, um, even Michael, the archangel, when, when Daniel was praying to him and, and calling out to, to, uh, God and he sent the archangel, he was, um, stopped by what the Bible calls the great prince of Persia, which Michael is the great parents of the people. So we're talking principalities here, uh, some kind of angelic entity, but he was being held up by this prince of Persia before he could get to Daniel. And so we're dealing with entities that are super powerful, but we do have intercessing entities that, uh, the because the Bible calls our God, the Lord of hosts, the uh, uh, Yahovah Savoot, the one who is in control of the angel armies. So we have that backing us, but we just, we have to have faith. David had faith. And that's why Saul was like, you know what? This kid has faith. I know he's going to do it because he has faith in God and, like what can stop me, you if God, if you know you put that faith in God? To me, you know these entities. Obviously, if you look at Ephesians six twelve, when we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Obviously, these things operate outside of our five senses. Yeah, and our sixth sense to us, to me, would be the Holy Spirit. Uh, your spirituality. So you can't dumb that down. You can't numb that with alcohol, marijuana, right. drugs, and things like that. You've got to be on point, especially now in this war, in this time, in this time, in this spiritual war. Um, give up all your vices, man, because you're going to be, you need to be keen. You need to be sharp. You need to be on point. And, and that's why it's, it's so important to me. That's why I really, why I quit everything um, is because yeah. I knew this, this time was coming. I felt it instinctively. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I just feel like it's very important for people to know just how important your spirituality is, how important God is. And for me, Jesus Christ, are you the same? I'm the same, man. And I think that uh, obviously we have to search and seek and um, cry out to God to give us more and more wisdom. And you're right. I believe the same thing. You have to cry out to the one who created it all, the one who understands the system that we're in. Um, because we are human and we are born underneath a regime to where propaganda rules and information is at best sketchy. And so the only teacher that we can have is the Holy Spirit. According to the Bible, it says you don't need any man to teach you, but the Holy, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. And so I rely on that because there's so much information. I'm a history major, somebody that studied history, and I've found so many holes in everything that I thought was a real history that it's just blown my mind. And, and I couldn't, I can't even fathom what the real story is, but I can know that the Holy Spirit's guiding me into that location. He's putting the, he, it, the Holy Spirit is putting, um, puzzle pieces together for me, connecting dots that I've never seen before. And so I'm relying on that. Guiding. I'm relying on his salvation because I'm not perfect. I suck just like every other human on earth. Um, and so, man, that's, I'm in the same place you are, bro. Well, John, this has been awesome, man. I'm going to be putting this up this weekend. I just got to get the thumbnail done. So I appreciate you coming on. Where can people find you, John? I'll put a link down uh, below. Too. Just on YouTube, you can find it at NYS TV or Now You See TV. Just type in one of those and you can find us on YouTube um, or whatever. You can go to our website too, nystv.org. And uh, thank you, Nino. I mean, I appreciate it. I really do. I, I just, you know, I don't get the opportunity to do too many of these, but the, the uh, ability to come on with you, I think you're the last person that I was 
on a show with for a long time. Oh, I, I think it was like last year around this time. I've done a couple here and there, but I don't always do them just because I feel like sometimes it's uh, it's I'm talking to the choir, but I really feel like with your audience, like it it uh, you have a very similar audience to me, so I'm appreciative of yeah, the opportunity. And you know what? Man. And then you let's have you on a lot more. So yeah, um, this is a fascinating subject. In fact, I'm jumping on with another person right now who has allegedly, and he's going to show pictures on this, have alien bodies, mummified alien uh, bodies. So the argument's not going to be whether I believe they're fallen angels or not. I mean, I, I, I'm, I, I look at all things, but my spirit tells me they are. That's what my spirit yeah. tells me. Um, but it's still going to be a fascinating interview. So folks get ready for that one. I'm doing that one. Right. Right. I'm rolling into that one. How, how look at the synchronicity of this before I get on with them. I do this one with you. Yeah. God's lining it out, man. It, guys. Yeah. God's lining like it out. Like another word, but... God's saying, keep your head on right. Yep. Wow, yep. man. All right, folks, go see uh, John Pounders at uh, S. Uh, yeah, now you see TV. Is it SYS TV? NY NYS TV. So just Sorry, like an acronym. Like yeah. yeah, it's just what like on the hat here. I it's hard to remember and. And unfortunately, yeah, right. Google is not very forgiving with people that search for us. We've been, you know, uh, it's hard. You know how it is, man. They love to. I know. Yeah. So. All right. So NYS TV, folks, YouTube channel. I'll put the link down below. Give them a follow. Help this guy out. I Thank appreciate you, you, John. This was a fascinating, fascinating interview. Thank you, brother. I hope to do it again soon. You got it, bud.